Korena et Tefano Bex here from Northwest Anglican. It's my chance this morning to share a few thoughts and reflections about our scripture reading this morning. Uh, and I just pray that you and everyone in your bubble is safe and well this morning. Uh, and just pray that uh, this time of worship of Whare Karakia is truly an encouraging time to you and that you connect with God. So you will have seen that the theme for our worship today is Into the Unknown. I'm sure the kids and maybe the parents and maybe even the grandparents know that Into the Unknown is the song that Elsa sings in the second Frozen film. So the character of Elsa across the two Frozen films, Frozen 1 and Frozen 2, she sings these two particularly significant songs. Uh, in the first film she sings the song Let It Go and in the second movie she sings the song Into the Unknown. Let It Go, uh, that song that I know so many of you will know, informed our series about Lent. If you cast your mind back only a few weeks ago, we finished up Lent at Easter time, and our series when we were gathering still together was the Let It Go series. And it was all about letting go of things that are inhibiting our walk with God. In the film, uh, Elsa is really singing about letting go of what other people's perceptions are of her and letting go of those expectations that are being placed on her to be a particular sort of princess. Uh, she knows that she has these special gifts that make her different and that song is really about her accepting her identity and embracing these gifts that she's been given. And it's a song about transformation. In the second Frozen film, Time has gone past and things have settled down in the kingdom and life has sort of taken a pretty smooth sailing format for a while. And then one night she hears this voice calling to her. She doesn't know whose voice it is and she doesn't know what the voice is saying, but she gets the sense that this voice is calling her into the unknown and she sings this song with that name. And in the song she says she's sort of resisting this voice that's calling her because she's finally feeling settled and she's finally feeling safe and secure in her new life in the kingdom. But she hears this voice and it's sort of, it's bugging her and she feels like she has to respond to this voice that's calling her out into the unknown, into the places that she doesn't know. And she says things like, she says, you know, I can hear you, but I won't because she wants to resist it. I thought it was sort of funny that we now are in a season where we too are headed into the unknown. It seems sort of ironic that we just did this Let It Go series for Lent and now we find ourselves in this season where we too are heading out into the unknown. You know, in the coming days and weeks, our lives will change yet again as we head to Alert Level 3. And like the Prime Minister said herself, in many ways, Alert Level 3 is much less clear to us than what Alert Level 4 was like. And so we too are sort of stepping beyond the threshold of our homes into the unknown. And what I liked about this theme is that I wondered if maybe that's what the disciples were feeling like when they were in that room that they'd locked themselves in a week after Easter. So in our scripture reading for today from John, it begins with that verse that says the, the disciples had gathered in a locked room for fear of the Jewish authorities. You see, the disciples and probably the extended group of followers of Jesus were fearful uh, that the same fate awaited them, that perhaps they were going to get persecuted by the Jewish authorities too for being followers of Jesus. So they've gathered in a locked room. They're scared. They're frightened. I imagine they were anxious, maybe even angry at what has taken place, and they don't know what is going to happen next. We already know that Mary has seen the risen Lord and that uh, she has uh, a run to the disciples, to Peter and the disciples, and shared this testimony uh, that Jesus is in fact alive and he has risen from the dead. But we don't know from John's gospel whether or not the disciples believed her testimony. I would imagine uh, that they hoped that she was right, uh, that they prayed that she was in fact correct and that Jesus had risen from the dead but we don't know that. And so imagine this room that they're in. It's locked. They can't leave. Something is going on outside that room that is dangerous to them. Does that sound familiar at all to us right now? It's in that space that Jesus enters in and offers these words to them. Peace be with you. I don't know why I find it surprising, but uh, Jesus always manages to enter into situations throughout scripture but also in our own lives 
and offer us the very words that we need to hear in that season, the very antidote to our own fears and insecurities and doubts. And Jesus enters into that space and offers peace to the disciples. Even the doubting Thomas, who we all so resonate with at different points in our lives, is calmed and settled by seeing Jesus' presence there with them. I think that Jesus is offering us that same peace today. You know, it's words that we exchange with one another every Sunday when we gather, peace be with you. And it's now Jesus who is saying to each one of us, peace be with you. You might be feeling quite frightened of the future right now. You might be feeling just really unsure. And I don't know what life in your bubble is looking like right now. Maybe you're starting to get a little bit agitated with your family. Maybe you're getting a little bit lonely because you're in a bubble by yourself or just with one or two other people. Maybe you're just desperate to get out and see the world again and see people. And I know that there's a lot that's really unknown right now. But I truly believe that through the scripture that Jesus is assuring us and encouraging us that God's peace goes with us into this next season. And that certainly doesn't mean that we know what the next steps will look like. And it doesn't mean that uh, uh, we can say firmly, this is what life will be like from now on. And I can do these things and I can go to these places. Yeah, truly all of that is unknown right now. But God's peace that passes all of our understanding is always with us and remains with us this day and in the coming season. And that's my prayer for you this day, that you would hold fast to God's peace. Uh, in the coming days and weeks as life changes yet again. We are going to have a worship song now, but while that worship song is going, I've got a task for the kids to do. Kids, I want you to head outside into your garden. I'm hoping it's not raining right now and collect five things for me. The first thing is a really big leaf, the biggest leaf you can find. The second thing is a teeny tiny leaf or a tiny blade of grass. The third thing is something that you find beautiful. It might be a flower or a leaf. If it is a flower, check with mum and dad before you pick it. The fourth thing is something that you might think is rubbish. Something that maybe you might just fully forget about or disregard. A stone, a twig, a dead flower. The fifth thing is find the crunchiest autumn leaf that you can find in your garden. Something that when you crunch it like this, it makes a really good crunchy sound. Don't worry if you've forgotten those five things because on the next screen I've written them out for you so that you know what to go and collect. So the idea is kids go outside and collect those things while the adults are worshipping uh, with the song in the next slide. If you're in a bubble without any kids, you get to do both. So enjoy uh, the worship song and sing along with it and then head outside and get those five things because we're going to use them as a way of informing our intercessions, which is going to happen after the worship song. So blessings on your bubble and you this day. I pray that you would know God's peace is with you. Uh, we're missing you all. We can't wait to gather again. And uh, yeah, God's blessing on you. Kia ora.